Tamika back because that's what meshed with their spirit. However, she went down, hallelujah, in Jesus' name. She was clean. She came up, hallelujah. She's new. So they can't have the old Katika back. Girl, you keep on walking. You're going to be a witness to them. Amen. In Jesus' name, you're going to be a witness. You're going to draw them. And so I praise God for his word. I praise God because the preachers, the teachers, the ministers, they'll tell you that God often comes by and uses our struggles, our insecurities, our faults, our sins to minister to other people. And so today I'm going to be a little more transparent. For some of you guys that already know me, you know some of my struggles. And there was a time I struggled with Lust. Hallelujah. Don't struggle with that right now. And there was a time I struggled with pornography. Don't struggle with that anymore. And there was a time I struggled with lying. And hallelujah. I don't struggle with that anymore. And there was a time I struggled with exaggerating, which is just a lie. But I struggle with it. But to God be the glory, I don't have that struggle right now. No goodness of my own, but the goodness of God. But there is still a struggle that I have. And sometimes God uses your struggle to speak to you. And right. yeah. That's right. For many of you guys that know me, you know I've struggled with food for a long time. And no, this message is not about Kelly's food addiction. But because I struggle with this addiction, I've often asked God to take it from me. And it took one of the mothers to tell me, but his grace is sufficient. Oh, yeah. and, I might have this thorn in my side, but through him, I can get through it. And some of you guys are saying that food addiction, yes, to gluttony. Yes. I'm a type 1 diabetic, and I've watched people in the body of Christ have legs amputated. I watched a good brother die just recently. One of the contributions to that was his diabetes. And I've watched people go blind. And it's real, and... Here I say I love God and I serve God and I can't get this thing under control and I want to live this life. And so several months ago, this, this message started in September and I didn't know this message started back then. And so something was brought to me called the keto diet. And this is only going to last one second. Just bear with me while I try to explain to you how this message came about. And so I said, oh my goodness, that looks like something I can do. And so I jumped on the bandwagon and I went keto. And I went keto for 24 hours. And I woke up the next morning and I looked in the mirror and I said, I'm not skinny yet. Come on, Kelly. <laughs> I followed the rules. I did what I was supposed to do. And so I, I, I went gung-ho and I stayed keto for a whole week. And I took my clothes off and I looked in the mirror and I was like, Still not skinny yet. And I found myself like I normally do. I, I began to get a little frustrated. and So I told myself, Kelly, you can do it. And I, 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 I do a lot of self-talk, folks, because this mind is crazy. And so I have to talk to myself all the time. And I, I told myself my new motto was do the best you can every day, girl. God orchestrates things. And in the midst of all this, my other sister from Michigan, she... She texted me, she said, Kelly, I'm struggling with my weight. She's a diabetic. She said, help me, girl. I said, great, I'm doing keto. So I started explaining to her, but every single day I sent her a text and it says, do the best you can every day. And so every single morning I got up and I told myself, just gonna do the best I can today. And you know what, I started doing better. I started doing better and at this point, I've been in since September and I've lost 30 pounds. To God be the glory. But that's not the point of the message. <laughs> Pastor Ash called me into his office one day and he said, as he normally does to a lot of us, I just want to talk to you. How you doing, girl? I said, I'm doing great, Pastor Ash. I just lost, I've lost 30 pounds. I'm doing really well. And he said, okay. He said, I really wasn't asking you how you're doing naturally, but okay, we can talk about that. I got home that night. And I already knew I was in trouble with God. And God had spoken to me. He said, you're doing the best you can. 
That wasn't an imperative. It wasn't an exclamation. It was a question. He said, Kelly, you're doing the best you can? I already knew the answer to the question. And behold, that's where this message started. And I found myself repenting over the next couple of months. And I'm here today, and I'm hoping that this message at the end, that I'm converted and that I'm changed through the word of God. You see, and I realized God began to talk to me. He said, girl, you're a sprinter. He said, you sprint in your job. You sprint in your church. You sprint with your marriage. And I said, Lord, you're right. I'm a sprinter. I come out of the gate hard, you guys. And I, I run and I run and I run. And at the end, I'm exhausted. I'm tired and I've sprint. And what happens, I'm running so hard. I'm running so hard. And I'm, and I'm looking around. I'm looking around. But the reality is I'm not seeing the results that I wanted from my sprinting. Come on. And I begin to get tired and because of my sprinting, I've let some people down. Some people sitting in this congregation right now. I've let myself down because of my own sprinting. And God knows I've let him down because of my sprinting. And God began to speak to me. He said, Kelly, it's not a sprint. He said, girl, sometimes you have to sprint to get out of harm's way. He said, but this is a marathon. He said, but the beautiful thing is, he said, girl, you're not the first one to run the marathon. He said, I've had other people run ahead of you. And I've given you those that is an example that you can run the marathon and finish too. And so I'm going to ask you to turn your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12 and I'm going to read from the King James and then I'm going to read the New Living also. I'm going to read verse 1 through 3 and I ask that you please stay with me just for a small space of time and keep on remembering God asked me you're doing the best you can. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Beset us I'm sorry. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despite the shame and is set down at the right hand at the throne of God. For consider him, for consider him that endureth such contradiction of sinners against him, lest ye be wearied and faint in your mind. The New Living says it like this. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders us and the sin that so easily entangles us, and let us run with perseverance the race marked for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. And today I just want to pull out a couple of those little sections and I'm not going to talk about your sin today and quit sinning. <laughs> You need to quit sitting. We all need to quit sitting. But I want to spend just a small space of time talking about those great cloud of witnesses and what it means to persevere and to endure. So I looked up the definition of perseverance, and you need to write this down or just remember. It says, persist in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success. It says tenacity. It says determination. It says resolve. It says staying power. Firmness of purpose. Endurance says this. It says to endure. It says to suffer patiently. Help me, Lord. I don't want to suffer at all, but let alone patiently. It says to go through. It says to experience. It says to remain. It says to last, to abide, to continue, to stay, to survive. And so, 
If you go back and you read Hebrews chapter 11, it talks about who those great clouds of witnesses are. And I pulled out just a couple that I want to talk about this morning real fast. And I want to talk about Noah. See, Noah wasn't a sprinter. I pulled some facts on Noah. Because sometimes we get discouraged because it seems like we're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And it's not happening fast enough. Well, God spoke to Noah and said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill everything. All these people on this earth because they're wicked and they're evil. And Noah, he preached. And he preached, repent. But nobody repented. God gave him instructions to build the ark. Listen to this, folks. Noah built that ark. Go back and study it yourself. Anywhere from 80 to 120 years before it rained. God told him, it's going to rain. I'm going to flood the earth. I'm going to destroy the people. He told Noah what to do. Noah did it. Do you know how foolish Noah probably looked? For 80 to 120 years, Noah had he stayed steadfast. He endured. While he didn't see anything coming, he didn't see the rain. But he knew what God had spoken. We don't want to hold out one day, two weeks, one year. I said, Noah, the rain didn't come for 80 to 120 years. Somewhere in there. We can debate it. You can go back and research it yourself. But yet he kept on building. He kept on building. He's one of those great clouds of witness. You know what? They're not there cheering us on. They're there as an example to us. If we just hold on, God's promise will come through. Amen. Amen. I love Abraham and Sarah. How can you talk about Abraham without talking about Sarah? They're the old couple that wanted a kid. Old, old, oh God promised them. He promised Abraham. So what did Sarah do? She's like us women. Guess what? Yeah, I'm talking about Sarah now. She's one of the only two women in the hero of faith, but Sarah's there. You know what she did? She began to see things with her own natural eyes. She took her handmaid, Hagar, gave him to her husband to produce a child called Ismail. Even though they had already been received a promise, the promise was Isaac. But she got weary. It's amazing, God. Let me tell you about his grace and mercy. Even though Sarah did what she did, God still fulfilled his word. Listen to this. Talk about holding on until your change comes. Ishmael was 14 years old before Isaac came. Here's the amazing thing. Here's Isaac. He's come. They blessed him. God blessed him. Isaac is here. So what happens? God tells now Abraham, go take your child, the one that I promised you, and go sacrifice him. You know what? You know what Abraham said? Sure enough, God, I'll do it. You've already given me my promise. You gave me what I asked for, what I wanted. You said I'm going to be the father of many nations. You gave me this, and now you want it back? You know what he said? He said, my pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. He had so much faith and trust and confidence in God in this marathon called life that he willingly took him up there to sacrifice him. And the amazing thing is he said, hey, that's okay, because if you kill him, you'll raise him. That's yeah. right. But you know how good God is. He can't go against his word. God provided the ram in the bush. There was a provision already there. All Abraham had to do was follow what God asked him to do, and he did it, and God provided. He's not a man that he should lie. Come on now. Speak the truth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Some of us have family issues, don't we? And we allow our family to discourage us. Well, you want to talk about somebody with some family issues? Have you heard of a man named Joseph? So we got our own issues. We have faith. We have trust. That's why I like Noah. He was resilient, 80 to 120 years. But Joseph, he was favored by his father. His brothers didn't like him. They hated him. His daddy gave him the coat of colors. So guess what they did? They planned to kill him. 
They took him out. They threw him in a pit. They stripped him of his coat. They took it back to daddy and said, look, daddy, he's dead. But the bottom line is he didn't die. As a matter of fact, what happened, everywhere that Joseph went when he was sold, he was blessed. Come on. Amen. He was already chosen by God, so he was blessed. No matter what his family did to him, his friends, guess what? He's the one that saved them in the end. Read the story. He was put in Potiphar's house. He must have been good looking. I don't know. You know he got to the point where he was in charge of the prison. The woman wanted him. He said, no, I can't do that against God. She went and lied on him. So he got through in jail. But guess what? He found favor in the jail. Wherever he went, he was blessed. What they meant for evil, God turned it around. Don't let your family discourage you. My personal favorite character in the Heroes of Faith would be Jesus. See, Jesus, he suffered extreme. He suffered shame. He suffered opposition. He went through things that we'll never understand. He knows our pain because he felt pain. He knows our sorrow because he felt sorrow. He knows what it means to be cold, to be hungry, to be all those things. Amen. Hebrews 4 and 15 says it like this. It says, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. And listen to this. He finished his race. Yes. Paul says it like this. He says, I press toward the mark. What is the mark? We all have the same mark. We're pressing toward the high calling. We want to meet him face to face one day. All we have to do is endure. And so I want to go back to this race just for a few minutes in. See, if you want to be a winner in this race or in this marathon of Christianity, you have to have a spirit of endurance. You have to. Victory does not always come easy on this side, folks. Sometimes you got to put some sweat and tears. Sometimes you got to get on bended knee. A lot of times you got to get on bended knee. Yes. Amen. But God is so amazing. He gave us this great cloud of witness. You know why? He said, if they can do it, surely you can do it. Yes. If they could hold out, you could hold out. Yes. If they could believe, surely you can believe too. Yes. Yes. And so... I found this so interesting. I'm, I've been studying for this message and I don't have any idea. I was, I was on YouTube and I saw this race. It happened, it was, a, it was a relay race and when I got into it, it was on the last leg and they're coming and it's a 400 or 440, it's one whole lap around. Don't understand that race because that is Jesus, I can't imagine. That's a sprint, a whole lap. But they're on the last leg and they're coming in and the first two and three, one, two and three people give the batons and the girl that got it in the fourth and fifth position, they were way far ahead. I mean, below, behind. And they were running, they were running and, and they were running and I saw them come around that last lap and the girl who was in the fourth position who I thought was so far behind, she came back and she won the race. And hold on, let me, let me tell you what the commentators said. They said it so well, they said, Let's watch it again. And they slowed it down and they said, watch her face for the last 30 to 40 seconds of the video. She's not anxious. She's not fretting. She doesn't even appear to be aware of her surroundings. The girl was behind. You hear me? I didn't think there's any chance she could come. It says she ran her race. She didn't look like she was worried about anything or anyone. As a matter of fact, when she crossed the finish line, she didn't know she had won the race. <laughs> now that's something, I'm not a runner, but I've been told this by runners, that you're taught a certain form, and you're taught as a runner, Sharice would know this, that when you're running the race, you, you can't be doing like this. And number one, two, and three, so they slowed it down so we could watch. Number one, two, and three, they were worried. I mean, they were huffing and puffing, but number four, let me tell you, she kept her stride the whole time. She never looked left or right. She stayed focused. The girl looked like she was just kind of just strolling along. Same look we should have. 
We're in this marathon and we get anxious. We get worried. We get fretful. But if our eyes stay on Jesus, yes. there's nothing to worry about because we're always going to finish the race. Yes. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We're always going to finish the race. And so God spoke to me. He said, I'm not pleased, Kelly, with you just doing your best. He said, I need and I want more from you. He asked me this question. He said, why should heaven get excited because you do all that you do within your power? He said, girl, why is heaven supposed to be excited about when you do what you're supposed to do? God wants us to do something that's above our head and beyond our own strength. He wants us to do what we can't do. See, there comes a time when we mature in God and when we endure hardships as a good soldier. And he wants us to get to a place when... We're doing what we can't do. In other words, I'm going through, I'm going through, and I, I quit murmuring. I quit complaining. I quit being lazy. I quit all these things to glorify God. See, the world knows what man can do. The world needs to see what God can do. And so it's not about what you can do. It's what you can do through Christ that's going to change and make a difference in your life and someone else's life. And so where does it start? It starts with me. It starts with me going to that higher level. And Lord, what are you saying to me? And he said this. He said, if you've already been born again, if you've been washed in the blood, if the Lord has saved your soul, if the angels have signed your name, you ought to be able to do what you can't do. Quit relying on you because you're not good enough. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Lord. Jesus, help us. We get the fruit. We have love, we have joy, we have peace, we have long suffering, we have gentleness, we have goodness, we have faith, we have meekness, we have temperance. But guess what? When we get running this race, we get distracted and we begin to act on our own. And all people see is you and you and you and me and me. People need to see Jesus through God. We can do all things. Thank you, Lord. See, whatever you can do, you and God can do better. With God, your little becomes a whole lot. With God, just that little meal and that cup of oil, it fed that it fed the preacher and that starving widow. Just with with God, those two fish and those five loaves, it fed the multitude. You don't have enough, but with God, you have more than enough. Yes. When you're incapable, he's capable. Yes. When you're weak, he's strong. Yes. When you don't know, he knows. Yes. When you're powerless, he's all powerful. Yes, he is. When you have no answer, he is the answer. Yes. Consider this. God challenged me. This is not going to be popular, but this is what God said to me. He said, you can't do what you can't do until you do what you can. <laughs> you can't do what you can't do until you learn to do what you can. Yeah. Okay, I'm about to mess y'all up. Y'all ready? Okay. He says, how can I trust you with heavenly wisdom and ability if you're not faithful to the earthly task I've given you to do? Wow. You can't do what you can't do until you do what you can do. He said this to me, and I'm sorry, but I said I'm going to be changed after this message. Okay? He said some of y'all want to speak healing, but some of y'all words are not pleasing to me. You can't do what you can't do until you do what you can. He said some of y'all 
want to lay hands. Some of y'all want to walk and do certain things and you want to lay hands. And he said, these hands are filthy because of what you did with those hands. You can't do what you can't do until you do what you can. And so there comes a time when we have to grow up and we have to mature. And this mouth got to shut up and these hands have to be clean. until we do what we can do through God. Hallelujah. Lord, I'm sorry. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. God. See, Jesus, he bare the cross and he kept on running. They whipped him 39 stripes, but he kept running. They pierced him in his side, but he kept running. They laid him in the tomb, but he kept running. How do I know he kept running? Because he got up. Yeah. <laughs> and the power that he got up with is the same power that he gave to us. Yeah. Some of us have wanted to jump out of the marathon. Mm -hmm. And God is speaking this morning. You keep on running this marathon. Keep on running, keep running, keep running. He said, you're not just running for you. You're running for your family. You're running for your friends. You're running for your job. You're running for your mother, your brother, your boyfriend, your girlfriend. You're running this race for your salvation. Help us, Lord. So guess what? I really can't do it on my own. I can only do what I can do. But when I link it up with God... I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. And see, sometimes we're in this marathon and it seems like everything is dark and there's clouds over us. And it's okay because the Bible says, guess what? He'll be a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my path. Lord, light it up. It's dark right now. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. What is God saying this morning? He's saying, be encouraged. And Hold on. He said, I gave you those great clouds of witnesses. He said, they've already ran this marathon. He said, and guess what? I'm faithful. I kept my promises to them. How much more for me to keep my promises to you? He shows the blood. And so guess what? You might be the Noah today. You might have to build for 80 years. Guess what that means? Keep building. Keep building. Keep building. He's not slack concerning his promises. If he spoke it, he will perform it. Yes. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And so, Woo. glory. Thank you, Lord. For all of us sprinters in the house, Thank you, Lord. <laughs> God is saying we've got to retrain. Hallelujah. It's time to retrain. The blessing is we already know what the finish brings. Yeah. Heaven or hell, you choose. <laughs> yeah. The story's already been written. We know the ending. But can you endure? Do you have the staying power? And if you don't have the power, come get the staying power in. Can you hold on despite what it looks like? He shall perform it in his time. Come on. Thank you, Lord. And so, if you need prayer today, the altar is open. If you need prayer, you can come and get prayer. If you haven't been born again, you can be born again today. If you need some encouragement, I'll point out the preachers and you can go get some encouragement today. Come on, you guys. We're all in this race together. And I feel you, Reg. I feel you. Even after God, I struggle with certain things. I did. I still struggle today with certain things. But when I yield to God, when I'm connected to the vine, that's when I have victory. 
The amazing thing about God is he just won't do it for me. He'll do it for you, for you, for you, for you, for you, because he's a loving God. He's a forgiving God. He's a way-making God. He's a promise-keeping God. He's a God in new mercies. And so there is water. If somebody needs their sins washed away and someone wants to be made new today, you can go down. Hallelujah. But we're going to pray. This place is amazing. Because you know what? He's linked us together in. There was a time where some of us women didn't like each other. We didn't like women. But the truth of the matter is, when we are a woman of God, we begin to love one another. And we hold each other up and we support one another. In the... Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You have a support system if you want one. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is that merciful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord God, hallelujah. We thank you for your people, Lord God. 